Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Pan-African Mathematics Olympiad 2018, problem number 1. We wish to find all functions from the set of integers into itself such that f of x plus y squared equals f of x squared plus f of y squared for all integers x and y. It's an interesting problem, here are my hints. First of all, remember that if a n is a sequence, is an arithmetic progression, then we know that a n equals a plus d times n for some constants a and d. It's true even for arithmetic progression which goes from minus infinity to infinity. Then actual hints set y to be 0 and express f of x squared in terms of f of x quantity squared, then try setting y to be 1 and look at the sequence of squares of our numbers. Then finally set x and y to be 0 to find f of 0 and finally the nice part, the nice um, quirk of this problem Solutions may turn out to be quite strange. You shall see in a minute. In a minute, we'll give this problem a try, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so here is my solution. As I suggested, first of all, let's set y to be zero. Set y to be zero. Then we get the following: f of x squared equals f of x squared plus f of 0, which allows us to express f of x squared as f of x squared this way minus f of 0. Okay. Now, let's set y to be equal to 1. Then we get the following. f of x plus y plus 1 rather equals f of x squared but we know that f of x squared can be written in this way well plus f of 1 and that means if you look closely this term differs from this term only by some constant that means that Crucially, sequence f of x squared, this sequence going all over integers, is an arithmetic progression. Is an arithmetic progression. Progression. Okay, so in other words, i.e., there are numbers let's say sorry a and d such that such that what happens such that f of x squared equals a times x plus sorry a plus d times x for every integer x for every integer x very well but now let's consider the possible values of d notice i claim that this number d must be zero must be zero because well if d were not to be zero then a plus d times x is negative or some x. Why is that? Well, for example, if d is positive, then for huge negative x's, we'll have negative quantity. If d is negative, then for huge positive x's, we will have negative quantity. This is impossible because that is a square. This is impossible. Maybe write it in red. This is impossible. 
since f of x squared is greater than or equal zero. So, in other words, our sequence must be constant. That means that f of x squared equals, well, obviously, a must be some number squared. So f of x squared is constant. It's constant. It must be. Very well. Very, very well. Uh, and now, well, let's consider what this constant can be. So let's get back, let's go back to our functional equation original and let's set both x and y to be zero. Then, then what happens? Let's look back. F of zero squared equals two times f of zero. F of zero squared equals two times f of zero, which can mean only that either either f of zero equals zero or f of zero equals two which in turn means by our condition which i mark triangle condition condition triangle says that that either 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 f of x equals zero for every x for every uh, integer x or f of x squared equals four for every for every integer x okay well, function which is constantly zero is obviously a solution. It's obviously a solution because let's take a glance once again. Zero equals zero plus zero. No problem there. The second option, the second option, the second option, so maybe I write it. F which is constantly zero is obviously it's solution. It's solution. So now let's consider the second possibility. So let suppose now suppose that uh, that f of x squared equals four for every for every integer x. Okay, you know what? I will consider once again my original functional equation. I will mark it asterisk, and asterisk becomes asterisk now becomes becomes what exactly? Well, on the left hand side we have a square, so it's four. Four equals f of x squared plus f of y squared. Very well, but remember, remember that this and this can be either plus or minus 2. Well, why is that? Well, because we know that square, f of x squared, is 4. So this can be only plus or minus 2. And in fact, the only option for this to be true is that f of x squared and f of y squared must be 2. So that implies that for every uh, integer x, f of x squared equals positive 2. It cannot be negative 2. Very well. So now we have established, we have established that f of x In this case is for sure 2 if x is a perfect square uh, 
and either plus or minus 2 if x isn't is not a perfect square that's what we know about our function so far and now if you try going further you will see that you you, you won't get anything else from that, from now on and the crucial observation since maybe if you don't want don't know how to proceed maybe maybe every function of this form satisfies our equation so let's check it let's check it so we will we will show that every function from integers to integers of this form satisfies our equation. I will show that. Well, let's take a look. Mm. Left hand side, left hand side of asterisk. What do we have on the left hand side? We have f of x plus y squared. So it's either plus or minus 2 squared, it's 4. And what do we get on the, on the right hand side? Well, on the right hand side, we have f of x squared plus f of y squared. x squared is a perfect square, y squared as well. So it's 2 plus 2, 4. So it's satisfied. So in fact, every function of this description satisfies our equation. And remember also that function which is constantly zero is also a solution. So in fact, we have this rather strange uh, solution set. So these solutions, these solutions, well, one solution is function which is constantly zero. It's one possibility. The second possibility is any function f of x, which is two if x is a perfect square. And it's either plus or minus two, doesn't really matter if x is not a perfect square. And that's it. That's our solutions. Infinitely many because we can we can uh, we can do what exactly? We can uh, we can take here plus or minus two in any way whatsoever. Interesting functional equation, I, I would say. Okay, so I hope that you've learned something new this time, I hope that you were entertained, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.